Hello everyone, it's Dr. Vasquez, your doctor in criminal justice, bringing you another video on criminal justice topics. I got three stories for you. One story coming out of the Ozarks. A woman is on trial today for allegedly burning and then killing and disposing of the body of her daughter, who was 16 year old, with, uh, suffered from autism, depression, ADHD. I got another story for you coming here from the DMV. An individual walks into a food line exposes himself to uh, an employee, and then some bodily fluids come out as well. My last story uh, is for a former Minneapolis police officer who was convicted of third-degree murder, was also convicted of manslaughter, completed three years behind the bars, was confined, and is released as of today. Stay tuned for what comes next. Thank you. everybody welcome back so my first story like i said coming out of the ozarks it's on an individual named rebecca rudd she had a daughter her name was savannah this girl savannah was 16 years old like i said autistic depression adhd had gone missing in july of 2017 about the first week of august remains were found on or nearby uh, the farm where miss rudd uh lived uh, DNA came back to say that was uh, Savannah's uh, remains, right? So the trial has taken this long because there was a piece of evidence that was in question as far as a recording where Rebecca had confessed to uh, some of these alleged crimes, right? So uh, the judge or, or the, the courts, they were in question, this, should this be allowed, should this not be allowed? It will be allowed here at the court trial. So there's a couple of things I want to discuss. So with Savannah, she was given up at an early age, so she wasn't raised by her mother. So it wasn't until uh, she was 16 that she actually came back to her mother in her mother's life, right? Uh, so her friends had taken her as a baby. Uh, Rebecca had said that she was she didn't feel she was fit to be a mother. So she gave Savannah up at a, at a very early, early age. Only after the adopted parents had split up, had they decided, okay, it's time for you to go with your biological mother. So she ended up going from Minnesota down to the Ozarks. Rebecca had a farm that was 18 acres. So the first thing that I think of when I hear this story is why wasn't she being treated for for the autism, the ADHD, the depression? And then is that a medical issue or is that a criminal justice issue? There's a lot of times when medical needs help, they'll call a police officer or even anybody who's suicidal, anybody who's on meds or anything like that. So it's not it's not uncommon, I would say, for the medical department to hook up with law enforcement officers as well to ensure a process uh, gets done and, and someone's taken care of. So that struck out to me. The second thing I think of is 18 acre. It was an 18 acre farm. And my question to you is, how does the Fourth Amendment apply to a piece of land with 18 acres? Can you imagine 18 acres? What can happen on an 18 acre farm? You obviously a, a crime is a possibility that a crime could be committed and it will go unnoticed. That that's a possibility. You can have an army there. You can have a battalion there. You can have a jet there. So. Should there be limitations as far as, you know, we have the right to privacy, the right to unreasonable search and seizures, the protection, and so on and so on. But when it comes to land mass, when it comes to, you talking about 100 acres, 18 acres, 60 acres, should there be a limitation or should there be a disclaimer stipulation as far as that right to privacy? And then how, how exactly does that work out? And then my next question is, since we know all right, that there was already some turmoil. Uh, we already had issues. Uh, you know, like I said, Rebecca had given her daughter Savannah up at a very young age. CPS, right? Where you live, it might be called somewhere else, youth services. It might be called child family services, uh, child protective services. That is separate from law enforcement. Law enforcement, we're trying to find out has a crime been committed. Uh, and then child uh, family services, CPS, whatever have you, they're looking for the welfare, well-being of the family and the child as well. So it, it's two different entities. But my question to you is, should they be the same company? Should they fall under the same umbrella? 
Should CPS just be another sub division, subdivision of the police department and so on? All right, so going on into our second story. Um, we're, we're talking about here in Prince William County, Michael Earl Alexander, 31 years old from Woodbridge, walked into a food line on June 24th, which was a Friday. As I've already stated, the individual exposed himself, would walk up to an employee. Um, she was not looking and he was exposing himself, right? A private parts of, of himself. Uh, this was only discovered after they viewed surveillance. Uh, the employee was working, was stocking uh, aisles, didn't even know what was happening. So the incident came about when the individual walked up to her, said something, walked away, and then she noticed that she had uh, like a fluid substance on her. It would be later determined that they believed, they being police officers, believed that these were bodily fluids from that individual that went on to the employee. So my first thing, now we talk about punishment, we talk about rehabilitation. It's obviously this person needs help. Are we more for rehab? Should we be like, yeah, so we're gonna throw the book at this person or should it be more rehabilitation? That, that'd that be my first concern. My second concern is security. Uh, we keep looking at security from different locations, whether it be a mall, whether it be a parking lot, whether it be a movie theater, whether it be a, a grocery store. How can this go undetected? Again, I keep raising the uh, the flag that there needs to be a higher concern when it comes to the safety, security, well-being of these customers, right? Um, and again, we put security on the backside because this is another expense that I really don't want to pay for. Um, you know, and what's the likeliness of, of it happening? My perspective, it should never happen. And you should dedicate as many funds as you need to to make sure if I'm going into your store or if I work in your store in your establishment, I should be uh, secured at all time. And then my last question is, this was an incident that was identified. How many incidents like you think, like this you think occur that go unnoticed, meaning that it's not reported, it's not detected, um, you know, and we were only lucky to find it, find out about this incident. All right, going into our last incident, uh, former Minneapolis, Minneapolis, excuse me, police officer, Muhammad Noor was released today. I don't know if you remember, this was a very highly publicized story. Um, in, in 2017, I believe, yes, 2017, July 15, 2017, summertime, about 11.30 p.m. at night, this lady named Justine Rusarech, um, called the police officer and said, hey, man, there's a sexual assault. There's a possibility of a rape going on in the back alley. Please send somebody. They ended up sending Officer Muhammad Noor with his partner. Mind you, it's 11.35 at night. It's in the back alley somewhere. They drive up. They see nothing, okay? It's pitch black. Uh, Miss Justine comes up on the driver's side of the vehicle. Officer Noor is on the passenger side. She, I guess she the thumb, so she hits the vehicle. She goes to approach the driver, makes a hand gesture. Officer Noor believes that this is a weapon and ends up discharging his weapon. Ends up failing shooting uh, Miss Justine, and she ends up passing. Okay, he gets convicted of third degree murder and then gets convicted of manslaughter as well. So there was a ruling uh, last year that the third degree murder conviction was not going to uphold. So they dropped it down to a uh, manslaughter that dropped down the sentencing to four years and nine months. So first question, when's justice served? You know, four years, nine months for taking the life. Um, mind you, though, it was in the line of duty. That's my first question. Do you believe justice was served, taking the life? And, you know, let's just say you didn't even do five years. So would that be justice served? My next question to you is, can this happen to anyone? Like I said, the back alley, 1135, Saturday, we're in July, it's the summertime. You get the call via the radio, hey, hey, man, somebody probably getting raped, sexual assault, something's going on over here. So where's your mind frame at already? Are you already on high alert? Someone thumps your vehicle, someone comes up from behind, you can't really identify that individual. Would you pull a weapon like how, what would be the emotional state you would be in, the mental state? Uh, what would your readiness be at? And so on. And my last question is that anything change? This happened, what? Uh, this happened July 15, 2017. We saw Joel Floyd happen at, what, at the end of May of 2020. So sometimes, too, I think we, we get confused. All right. So, yes, we want to sentence a police officer. Everybody's up in arms. But I would argue to say you also want to see change. You do want to hold individuals account, but you want to see change. 
Because if you were just holding people accountable or police officers accountable, then what did you really do? You, you didn't really cause no change. This needs to be a cause and effect. So uh, so my last question, do you believe even through Officer Noah going to prison for what, three, four years, even though Derek Chauvin got committed guilty, do you believe there has been change? Okay. As always, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me know your comments. Drop them down in the box for me. Uh, thank you for tuning in and stay tuned for the next video. Hopefully, I'll bring that video out for you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody.